These lakes are beautiful on camera, but you do not want to swim in them. Number 11, Dalol. Just like the thumbnail shows, this otherworldly yellow landscape is dangerous. Dalol is a region in Ethiopia, in the Danakil Depression. This is the hottest area on planet Earth, with average year-round temperature of nearly 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 35 degrees Celsius. This means that the average high temperature in June is 116 degrees Fahrenheit. It also never goes below 70 degrees, even in the coldest months. It's extremely remote, with barely any paved roads in the region. But the volcanic activity underground in Dalol means that the hot springs in the area constantly bubble with putrid yellow water. It's full of salts, sulfur, and potash. Iron is prevalent, and special types of algae thrive in these extreme conditions. Occasionally, there is toxic gas released from the pools of salty water, and no one is allowed to swim in these hot puddles of acid. Although there's no lifeguard on duty, so technically no one's going to stop you. Number 10, Lake Natron. Another salty lake, Lake Natron is extremely shallow and the concentration of minerals puts the lake at a super high alkalinity with a pH of 12. It's also extremely hot with water up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. This lake is located in Tanzania in East Africa, like a number of toxic lakes on this list. The unique salt-loving bacteria and algae love it in Lake Natron and they turn the surface pink or red as they bloom there. There are a few normal animal species that live around the lake, though, including the famous lesser flamingo, which breeds there. Why on this toxic lake? Well, predators stay away, which makes the salt islands that form in the center of the water perfect breeding grounds. Be careful, though. If you do fall in, the water is so poisonous that it will turn you to stone, as it does with a few unlucky flamingos every year. If they fall in and suffocate, they get preserved in a creepy sort of fossil by the toxic buildup of salts that collect on their bodies. Number 9. Pinto Lake This quiet lake near Santa Cruz, California is absolutely destroyed by fertilizer that causes massive algae growths that choke out all other life. Fish die by the thousands and have their bodies left to rot on the shorelines. It comes from nitrogen and phosphorus sitting at the bottom of the lake that spur massive production of this toxic cyanobacteria. It may cause liver or kidney damage in humans, and you are forbidden from eating any of the fish that you catch in the lake. Let engineer Robert Ketley describe this lake in full algal bloom. He told local news, when we have a really significant bloom, the lake looks like automobile antifreeze with chunks of steamed broccoli floating in it. You then add to that, depending on what species of cyanobacteria is blooming, a smell that is either like gym bag or manure. Disgusting. Number eight, Berkeley Pit. This lake used to be a copper mine out in the mountains of Butte, Montana. Because of the open pit mining techniques, the water is at a highly acidic pH level of 2.5. Heavy metals in the lake include copper, arsenic, sulfuric acid, zinc, and cadmium. Needless to say, no one is allowed in. The real danger here is that the groundwater of the town has leaked into the pit since the closure of the mine and the shutdown of the pumps that kept the mine dry. This means that in less than 10 years, the water in the pit will rise to match the level of the groundwater in Butte, irreversibly polluting it and making the whole town lose drinkable water. There are solutions in the works right now, though, with funds from the famous Superfund cleanup effort going to protect the Columbia River and the groundwater of Butte. Today, though, geese die when they land in the water of this lake, and it's one of the most toxic bodies of water around. Number seven, the Blue Lagoon. This lake is located in Derbyshire, England. It's absolutely poisonous, filled with old cars, garbage, dead animals, and toxic chemicals, but it looked gorgeous, a deep, rich blue color. It was like the Berkeley Pit, left over from a quarry that mined different minerals years before. The pH of the lagoon is a ridiculously high 11.3, which is close to ammonia or bleach. Warning signs abound telling people that they could get rashes, infections, or stomach problems from simply dipping into the water. 
But did people listen? Of course not. Eventually, the town decided to pour black dye into the water in order to make it look less appealing. That's right, warnings of terrible illnesses and poison didn't turn people away, but black dye that can stain your skin? That was enough to get people to stop swimming. Number six, Lake Karache. This lake in central Russia was a dumping ground for nuclear waste back in the days of the Soviet Union. From 1951 until the fall of the USSR, the Mayak facility dumped waste material in the lake, resulting in an open-air storage for nuclear waste and the most polluted area on Earth from a radioactivity perspective. Compared to the Chernobyl disaster, there was over 50 times as much radiation from the powerful and long-lived cesium-137 pollutant. They drained the lake, but the lake bed is nearly entirely made of radioactive waste as deep as three meters down. The area around the lake is highly contaminated, and radioactivity of the area has resulted in radiation sickness for tons of nearby residents. A person sitting near the spot where the waste was being dumped into the lake would have died of radiation poisoning in less than an hour. The surrounding villages had huge increases in cancer and birth defects during the operation of the Mayak nuclear plant. There was also a major nuclear disaster here in 1957 called the Kishtim disaster, which spewed tons of radiation over a massive area to the northeast of Lake Karache. Multiple villages have had to be evacuated from the effects of this facility, and like Chernobyl, it would be foolish to go back to check out the area. The government has covered the bed of this lake with concrete blocks in an attempt to pack away the radiation, but this is still not a lake to swim in, at least for a few thousand years. Number five, Belandur Lake. This lake in Bengaluru in India is basically a massive sewer for the whole city. It's so polluted with sewage, waste, and toxins that the lake has caught fire on multiple occasions. That's right, the foam on the surface of the toxic septic pool was flammable, and it's burned off numerous times. This is one of the consequences of unchecked urbanization with little planning for how to properly manage wastewater. Because no one government body has jurisdiction over the lake, no one has taken responsibility for cleaning it up. Now the mix of human waste, industrial waste, and chemical dumping has made Belandur go from a wildlife haven to a smelly, flammable pool. No one dares go in here. The stench and disgusting chemicals that coat the surface of the water do enough to keep people far away. Numerous campaigns have been started to try and clean up the lake with mixed success. Over 20 years, the problem hasn't gone away, and the efforts haven't resulted in much real action being taken. Number four, Karimsky Lake. This lake used to be a pristine freshwater lake in Siberia, in the far east of the Kamchatka Peninsula. At the beginning of 1996, though, a strong earthquake caused an eruption of the nearby Karimsky volcano, which landed in the lake and dissolved in the water. From a clear freshwater paradise, the pH dropped all the way down to 3.2, and the water turned yellowish brown. The salmon living in the lake, of course, all died. The super hot magma and gas from below boiled the lake. The chemicals destroyed the water, and the waves caused by the earthquake uprooted trees and plant life in all directions and coated everything in toxic mud. However, over 20 years have passed and the pH is moving back to normal, though the salt level of the lake is still high. Why? The newly opened volcanic vents at the bottom of the lake pour more minerals into the water, which keeps the salt level comparatively high. Looks like some things go back to normal, but some things are just never gonna be the same in Karimsky Lake. Number three, Lake Nyos. Lake Nyos is a crater lake in Cameroon and it sits on the side of an inactive volcano. What that means is that the magma sitting underneath the lake slowly leaks carbon dioxide into the water, turning it into carbonic acid. Like neighboring Lake Manun and the next one on this list, Lake Nyos is one of only a very few special exploding lakes and in 1986, it erupted a cloud of CO2, which suffocated 1,746 people and killed over 3,500 livestock. Over a million tons of carbon dioxide shot up out of the lake in a giant cloud, which then settled onto nearby villages, displacing all the oxygen 
and killing those who lived there. Survivors described the terror they felt as they could not breathe, finding the air to be a stinking, thick fog. They were unable to move and exhausted, their muscles running out of the oxygen they needed to work properly. Now the lake has a set of mechanical tubes that slowly vent the rising CO2 to prevent explosive eruptions like the 1986 tragedy, but it's still a dangerous and toxic lake. Number two, Lake Kivu. Lake Kivu is actually one of the African Great Lakes. It sits between the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Rwanda in the East African Rift. Like Lake Nyos, Lake Kivu is also at risk for limnic eruptions, which occur every thousand years on average. How do scientists know? They see evidence for mass local extinctions in the form of fossils and chemical deposits every thousand years going back in time. Volcanic activity is, again, the cause. If Lake Nyos killed thousands of people, an explosion of Lake Kivu would endanger millions. It would be among the deadliest natural disasters in modern history. The phenomenon has a term in geology from Swahili, mazuku, which means evil wind. Now, in addition to carbon dioxide dissolved at the bottom of the lake, there is a methane extraction in process to generate power from the natural gas created from the lake's volcanic activity. Let's hope that we can reduce the risk of a catastrophe while still benefiting from the natural geologic power plant. And now for the number one toxic lake on the list. But first, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and sound off in the comments below. Have you ever been to a toxic or polluted lake? Have there been cleanup efforts to make the lake safe to swim? Let me know down below. Number one, Siberian Maldives. This is a famous location for Instagram enthusiasts, a lake near Novosibirsk that looks as blue and tropical as the famous Maldives. It's not a clear blue tropical ocean that makes the lake look like this, though. Like the Blue Lagoon in Derbyshire, the Siberian Maldives is toxic, and people are warned not to go in. It's because of the toxic waste that the Siberian generating company has dumped in the water, the heavy metals, and other harmful chemicals that react and turn the water a bright blue. In fact, the location has become so popular with tourists that the company released an official statement on Russian social networks earlier this year. You cannot swim in the ash dump. Its water has a highly alkaline environment. This is due to the fact that calcium salts and other metal oxides are dissolved in it. Skin contact with this water may cause an allergic reaction. I'll just take a selfie from the shore, thanks. 